All right. So last lecture of 2000, and I won't say the year because I want this video to last for many years. Bananas. <laughs> Bananas. I forgot. That's our new beginning phrase. Um, last lecture of the semester. Um, super simple. Colligative properties on the AP have been diluted to just kind of knowing some stuff. No math is involved. So we're just going to kind of look at what colligative properties are and how they affect um, how they're affected by number of particles in solution. So a colligative property is a property that when you change the amount of stuff you put into a solution, those values change. So our three colligative properties are vapor pressure, boiling point, and freezing point. Um, when I say depend on number of particles in solution, I'm talking about numbers of molecules or ions. If we have a solvent and we put stuff in it, molecules or ions, we're going to change those three things about the solution. Okay? So I like to start with boiling point because I think it's the easiest to explain. Let's say that in order for us, pretend we're all water molecules. Let's say in order for us to boil, we, thought we need to run out that door into gas phase. And here we're liquid, and there we're gas, right? So that's going to take some energy, no big deal. But what happens if I take this room and I fill it up to our waists with Chuck E. Cheese ball pit balls? A, it would be really cool. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun. But B, it would take more energy for us to get out into the hallway, right? So what would happen to our boiling point? We'd have to increase it. Okay? So think about these water molecules and the necessity to boil. They need to get into the gaseous phase. When you put junk in here, it's going to kind of block the molecules and hinder their, their process of getting into that phase. So boiling point is going to increase. All right? If we do freezing, think about, remember the way the mo water molecule is with the shape and how in order to freeze we had to perfectly line up in this crystalline structure, right? So in order to do that crystalline structure, that perfect military looking thing, nicely aligned, when we throw junk in there, that junk gets in the way. So these molecules that are trying to freeze are trying to align right, and so they're going to need to be slowed down more. Energy needs to lower so they can more easily make those hydrogen bonding connections with the other water molecules. So what happens to your freezing point? It goes down. And I did this last year. If you had me last year, everyone put your hands up like this. Okay, this is a thermometer. This is freezing, this is freezing and this is boiling. This is a solvent. When you put junk into a solution, what happens? That. Boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. Okay? So there is a lot of real life examples of this. Let's start talking about some things. What are things in real life that we depend on that either elevate boiling points or depress freezing points? Salt on the roads. It's always a good time of year to talk about this. It's not a huge deal in Texas, but um, if they put salt on the roads, that salt basically doesn't stop the water from freezing, but it freezes at a lower temperature. So we might get a few more degrees where we don't have ice. They also kind of do it for traction sometimes, too. So if they do sand, that's usually for traction. But if they do salt, for sure, they're trying to, to lower that freezing point. What else? Okay, let's talk about that. Salt and water when you're boiling pasta. I've heard this said the wrong way many a times, and I'm always correcting like people at parties and stuff. I'm such a nerd. But a lot of people will say, oh, when they're cooking, preparing dinner for a oh, I'm going to put salt in the water so it boils faster. It doesn't really boil faster. What is happening when you put salt in the water? When is it boiling? Is it boiling at 100? No, it's boiling a little bit higher. So it actually takes a little bit longer to boil, but if you then put your pasta in the water that's 101 instead of 100, it cooks faster. Right? So at the end of the day, it takes longer to boil, so it really doesn't like make that much of a difference in the life of the pasta, but whatever. That is something that comes up a lot. What else? I can think of another one. Antifreeze in your car. Um, we don't look at the antifreeze 
side of it as much in Texas. We're looking at anti-boil. They should probably call it anti-boil because, yeah, it does this. So up north, the antifreeze lowers the freezing point of the water in your, in your engine, in your radiator. There's not probably water in the engine, but I don't know. Is there water in your engine? No, it's radiator, right, in your coolant system. Um, so it lowers that freezing point. But in Texas, we don't see that very much. We, we see a lot of temperatures that could lead to evaporation of water. So we, we have the antifreeze in there, and it does the opposite. It, it increases that boiling point, so we don't lose as much liquid from our systems. Um, I think those are, those are the main ones. Any questions about this? Now let me ask you something. Let's say I work for the Department of Transportation. And I'm told, okay, dude, it's your first day. Say Matthew. Matthew's on his truck, and he's riding, and he's going over the Mopac Bridge, and he's got three bags in the back. And the, and the guy's like, dude, it's going to be a big freeze tonight. We've got to make sure this bridge is taken care of. In the back, he's got like some five-pound bags. He's got a five-pound bag of glucose. He's got a five-pound bag of sodium chloride. And he's got a five-pound bag of calcium phosphate. What should he dump on the roads and why? Why calcium phosphate, Noah? Okay. It looks better? Okay, no. He's correct. It is calcium phosphate, but why? Okay, what are we what are we doing? Go ahead, Kate. Let me hear what you have to say and then I'll ions. More ions. That's what it's based on. Remember, these these things are based on numbers of molecules or ions in solution. For every one glucose molecule, does that dissociate at all? No. So this is going to be only one piece. One particle. For that for that five pounds, you're going to get one particle per glucose. When you put sodium chloride, what is it going to do? It's going to split into two particles in the, in the water. When we want it to, to, to melt it because it's going to split into ions and lower that freezing point. But this guy is going to split into five particles. So he's going to have the biggest effect, the same amount. We're dealing with our five-pound bag. The same amount is going to have a larger effect because of the number of ions that dissociates into and that's what colligative properties are about. Because freezing and boiling are colligative properties, which is based on number of particles, we can dilly-dally with things like this. Okay? All right. And the last one is vapor pressure. This is pretty easy. So let me get my – it's just easier to use an actual cup. So I have this cup, this container, all right, in the space – in the closed container above the water, there's, there's water vapor in there. That's creating the vapor pressure. Along with an ant walking on the water, what's causing that? Why can he do that? Surface, Surface tension. Yeah, that's awesome and gross all at the same time. Um, I don't understand why. Are they thirsty? They always go into my water. They go into my tea kettle. Now they're in my drink. Whatever, I've been getting a lot of extra protein lately. Um, so anyway... The vapor above here is the vapor pressure. It's causing pressure because that vapor is hitting the sides of the container, right? So let's say I put junk in here, like sodium chloride or like glucose. I put anything in there. What is that going to do to the vapor pressure? Lower. Can someone tell me why it's going to lower? Who wants to explain it? Nara. Is it more attractive forces? You could think of it that way to a degree, but just like with boiling, what? Right. Because we're lowering the boiling point and we're inhibiting molecules from evaporating, that immediately makes the vapor pressure lower. So while boiling point is elevated, vapor pressure is decreased. Does that make sense? So if we've got – and Naira is kind of right. We just don't get really into it because it's more than just attractive forces. When you have stuff in there, there's more electrons causing more attractive forces, which keep them down. But we've got to talk about entropy and enthalpy. That's why they took this off the AP because we were kind of lying to our students about it. So, yeah, we have more attractive forces 
these, these water molecules are being blocked. So less is going out into this vapor, pre vapor phase, so the vapor pressure is decreasing. OK? So vapor pressure decreases, and then whoosh, this happens. Freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. Got it? All right. That is our last le lesson of the semester. We made it halfway. Let's clap so everybody can hear in the world how happy you are that we're done with first semester.